close that window. That your glory shall rest in us completely. And we know that your, your light shall shine and forth in us. And you make us to, Lord, rise up in all that you want us to be. That we will bless you, we honor you. For you are great and mighty God. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus. Thank you so much, my Father. And we honor you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Once again, you're welcome for lunch hour. And I bless the name of the Lord for every one of us who is able to call in today as we carry on with our year's message. And today I'm going to be speaking to us about embracing God's opportunities. Embracing God's opportunities. And we're going to read some few scriptures here. And it's my prayer that you will be blessed as we restudy this and have this lunch hour together. That in the name of the Lord, the Lord will bless us indeed and show us all that we need to do in seasons and times when he calls us. Genesis chapter 1 and verses 28. Genesis chapter 1 and verses 28 is my first reading. And uh, those of us who can open, open that, up, let's, let's go, go there, there and, and study the scripture, scripture together. together. Genesis, Genesis chapter, chapter 1 and verses uh, 28. 28. My Bible, Bible says, God bless them and say to them, Be fruitful and increase in number. Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. And then verse 29 says, Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with the seed in it, there will be yours for food. And to all the beasts of the, uh, the earth, and all the birds in the sky, and all the creatures that move along the ground, everything that has the breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food until it was so. Ephesians chapter 5, after reading that, we shall go straight to Ephesians chapter 5, so that you can later be able to share with us the message. Um, without taking much time into reading um, all time. Ephesians chapter 5, and I'll read verse 15 uh, forward. Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, it says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise. Make the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but, uh, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to uh, debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, speaking into one another with the psalm, uh, hymns, and, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So friends, this is, these are the scriptures we're reading today, and I can assure you that by the glory of God and the love of God, we come to speak this afternoon, and our word is, let's embrace or every opportunity that the Lord gives us. When we don't ex express the opportunity God gives us, we always end up at the point where the devil will have his way in our lives and always aim at push, putting us to the corners where he would wish us to be his and to and not destroy us completely. Opportunities are the directives God gives. Sometimes we want to call it directives. We don't want to call it opportunity. When God created mankind, he gave directive to mankind. 
He made mankind to know what he, God, would wa want him to do. He created mankind and already bestowed the responsibilities that man had to do. When you are created, when we were created by God, the Bible tells us that God, before even we are created, he knows us. And he has plans. He has set opportunities for us. He has responsibilities that we need to do as far as in response to our creation. Friends, many times we live like people don't know who we are. We live like people who don't know actually that which we are meant to have. And most times when we do that, we end up in a state where the devil comes in and picks us from nowhere and we are headed to a place where we don't know. Speaking about this as we, so we are in the beginning of the year, the year has 366 days in it. But out of the 366 days, there are those who get lost, there are those who die, there are those who use, get used opportunity properly, and they will never be under the arms of the enemy that will come to steal, kill, or destroy their lives. While the year opens, the three agendas of Satan still stand. And I want to remind you about that, friends. You know, there is no time that Satan will ever keep quiet and say, I have had enough. I am not going to disturb these fellas again. That time will only come when he has been put to his place. But right now, as we speak, Satan is at work. He has responsibilities to do things. He has assignments to accomplish many things that he has to do. You know, but if we are not wise enough, if we do not know the opportunities why we are created, then we end up into the lures of Satan and we are stolen, we are killed, and we are destroyed. Those agendas in John 10.10 10 are still working and they will keep working until the church of Christ wakes up. So God has given us here and there are a lot of opportunities God has given us. And we need to embrace them. Embracing them means we have to take lead and believe in every opportunity God has given man. When God created, as we read in Genesis chapter uh, uh, 1, verse 26, 26 uh, 28 onwards, God created man in the beginning, says, and let us now make man in our own image, in our own likeness, you know. And so it was. And God breathed on them and man. And he began to live. You know, but he had assignment for man. You know, he signed him. He had it put opportunities over him. And he, tell, he told him now, well, after I've done this to you, go, I have given you all the things. Go, use the food. You know, no, you know many times we actually don't know that the leaves of trees are meant to be medicinal to us. Before the white medicine came, the best medicines were these local things. But if today you find even believers, they don't want to go and look for those things. Just because wicked people have embraced these things and they, they first enchant over it before. But everyone who has opportunity and they know a particular leaf of a tree that can heal you, that can treat a disease from you, it is not sin for you to take that. Today people run away from herbal medicine because they say it is, you, it, is, it is sin. As long as you are the one who has engaged in making that herbal medicine, my friend, take it. They are better than this mix up of drugs that you know, we buy from pharmacies. Because God himself spoke earlier and said the leaves of these trees shall be medicine for you. And also in the, in, in, in the book of Revelation, he makes it come to pass again. He recommands, he re-gives opportunity. Because God knew we will not live free without sicknesses. We will not live free without, you know, getting ourselves into some troubles. And so he had a red opportunity for us. When you begin to feel headache, go and get this. For us in Teso, we used to have what is called a wusuk. You go and just get a wusuk and begin to chew it drink and headache from at whatever corner who advise itself. But I know Usuk is no more there. You cannot even find it. And those who find it, you know, they've turned to become an idol things. You know, 
It is only found by witch doctors. Those people who used to get them, you know, it is because people have cut down trees, people have done everything, so you cannot get a wusu. So we end up into these uh, quinine, panadol, everything. And yet, you know, those things that God had purposed, the opportunities of all the things were put around for us earlier. Friends, this year as we open, there's something very key that the Lord has put to me to speak to us. He has granted every humanity a greater opportunity in life, which we need to embrace before we run to things. You are wonderful and created of God. You are not a mistake on earth. Never. By the day, by the time the day opens like this, there is an opportunity God has given to you. Every one of us, there is an opportunity God has given unto us for every day of life. We have to either agree to choose that which is okay or go in the ways that, you know, will never, you know, make God be the light in our lives. In Ephesians chapter six, uh, 5, verse 15 to 18 that we read, you know, make the best of the opportunities. As you make the best of the opportunities, you have to make choices. There is a time when we need to choose. If we don't cho make choices, we cannot move. If we don't make choices, we cannot gain. So friends, I want to ask of us, while things are moving in, in the ways, we are called by the Lord in seasons and time like this to make the best use of every opportunity we have. And this should be for the honors of his name. God, has given man all the things that we need. And when you look through scripture, every man who comes to terms and knows who they are, they have ever celebrated in the different opportunities God gives to them. Do you know that opportunity to live and to die is also bestowed to man? Did you understand? Did you know that? Do you know the opportunities to every breakthroughs in life is also given to man? The Bible tells you, a man who sleeps, a man who does not work, should not eat. You know, a man who does things in ways that, you know, should not have opportunity to mingle with the people. So there is a divine need, a divine desire that the Lord has for us. So we can be able to rise up. And when we rise up, we are taken on to, you know, doing things rightfully for kingdom purposes. What are the opportunities that God has given or bestowed to you in 2024? Have you noted them down? One opportunity that we, every one of us need to embrace is an opportunity to live or opportunity to have life. I have life, but I can play around with this life and I will cause trouble to this life. But if I know that this life of mine is actually a greater opportunity given to me by God, I will speak positive about this life. You know, Solomon teaches his sons and tells him, his son, if you love your tongue, you shall eat of the fruit of it. Anybody who loves their tongue so much, the outcomes of your tongues is what you're going to eat of. If you love your tongue, better use it properly. If you love your tongue and you use it negatively, that is what will happen to you. There is an opportunity of life. There is an opportunity to live. Every one of us need to live. And we need to embrace the opportunity of life. 366 days, there is the opportunity for us to live. Will you embrace it? Will you know what to do as far as the 366 days are concerned with your life? When we play around with the life and we mess up our lives anyhow, we begin to go every place. We begin to dump ourselves to everybody, my friends. We will not be able to see this life again. Many people perish 
Many people are still perishing. And the Bible quantifies it that we perish for lack of knowledge. Life and walking on life needs knowledge. Anybody who does not have knowledge cannot have the opportunity of embracing life. But when you have knowledge, friends, you can be able to embrace what life carries in for you. There is opportunity for days to man he has given in every day. And that's why he says, no, teach us how to number our days. How many of us know the opportunity, what we need to do every day of our life? How many of us? To every humanity, God does not differentiate whether born again or you are not born again. The opportunity of the day is given to everybody. But they that will know how to embrace and utilize the opportunity well are the ones that will see the light of the sun tomorrow. But if you don't know how to embrace, you know, the day you cannot be able to see the light of the sun tomorrow. Praise the Lord. So we need to come to terms in life. What are these things? What is the day for me? How do I walk out on my day every day as I wake up? God asked Job in Job 38, have you commanded your morning? Have you com do you know what the morning carries? Do you know morning speaks about the day? You wake up to another day. Job, do you know? Job, have you commanded your morning? God is giving, he was telling Job, you had opportunity. You have opportunity to speak over your day, every day. Early morning, rise up and speak to your day. No, David goes, in the morning, God, I praise you. In the afternoon, I lift up your name. In the evening, oh God, I honor you. When you ask yourself a question, every day of your life, 366 days, what do you do every day? You have opportunity of that day. What do you do every day? Every day. Day carries between day and night. What are the responsibilities that you carry on to do every day? Hallelujah. Many of us here live to whom it may concern. Many of us here wake up to whom it may concern. We are not bothered about what plans we have to do with what we need to put down for the day. We just wake up and say, ah, let me go. Maybe today, let me try. Friends, when you understand, you need to strategize. Everyone who ever strategized for their days, they were able to see victory. In every war David strategized for, he had to see victory. Israel and Saul were battled down for 40 days. In the 39th day, that's when Saul, I mean David came in. You know? This man had stood up and he was, you know, mimicking this guy, showing them that they are useless. And these guys did not know how to number work on their days. They did not know what to speak and what the power they carry over the day. But everyone <coughs> who understands what the day calls in for them, you will always celebrate. Friends, as I welcome to a day like today is Tuesday, what have you done for your life? What are the things that you've been doing out for your life? From the big rising of the sun up to now, friends, what have you done? What are the things that you've taken on in your life to make that day a brighter day for you? What is that, friends? We have left. We woke up in the morning. We have never commanded our day. We have never spoken in wisdom of our day. We are just living, you know. And some other people are speaking over our lives. 
people rise up to speak over us. And for us, we do not know. In Micah chapter 2, the Bible gives a warning. That the people know how to wake up early in the morning. Because it is in their power to curse other people. To take possessions of other people's inheritances. And they are very sure that they will do it. And they are very sure they will win that battle. And friends, because they have you know, planted too much of iniquity in them. They plot evil in their bed. And early in the morning, the Bible says, they rise up. They rise up and begin to cast it because it is in their power. And what do they do? They cast to covert fields and seas for people. They cast to take houses for people. They cast to you know, defraud people of their properties. They cast to rob people of their inheritance. When you don't know how to embrace the opportunities of the day, someone in your village, someone in your neighborhood there is already up early. And they are, they are, they are embracing and terminating all the opportunity that the day was to bring for you. You wake up and that was a day when you were meant to have all that you needed. But you wake up to angustness. Nothing completely. Have you ever woken up in your life and really know this would be the, this is the best day for me? But because you did not know how to embrace it, friends, things just turn upside down. God created us and that is one of his image. His purpose was for us to be able to know, embrace the day and know how to speak to it. These are not just kept like that. You have to speak to your day. You have to command the day to honor you. You have to command the day to be obedient to the call of God and the purposes of God in your life. You have to command the day to speak and bring to pass every opportunity God, you know, purpose for you for today. Today is a Tuesday. You have to speak to it early in the morning and speak and say, as far as Tuesday is concerned, it is my day of blessing. Today I am blessed. Today I am blessed. And the glory of the Lord rests in my life. Hallelujah. Friends, I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what, you know, would be that standing your way. But I'm speaking to you the oracles of the Lord. Very important that God looks at humanity and he cries and says, who has bewitched my people? That we have forgotten what we had to do. We have forgotten our responsibilities. No man can cry. No man can break, reorganize for you your life better than you yourself. No man. We would be able, if there were only people to do that for us, we would have nothing to do for ourselves. But we have responsibility that we need to take as far as our lives is concerned. Embrace the day and know what to do during the day. Number three, opportunity of time and seasons. The Bible says, for there is time for everything. In Ecclesiastes chapter three, everybody who knows the opportunity of a time will know what to do. Everybody. I was talking to one of the, the people working in the hospital. They asked a question. Why is it that people die between midday and midnight? Between the time of midnight and then cross around 4 a.m. That's when we lose so many people in the hospital. They don't know that even in the Bible it's written at midnight, you know, and death came at midnight. At noonday, the sun might people. Anyone who knows how to you know, embrace the times, who know what to do at what hour. But, you know, Pastor, Dr. Steve Ogan has a book when he wrote, and, and, you, know, you know, waging wars at the gates of time, at the midnight watch hour, at the midday watch hour. And he gives strategies of what happens or what takes place during the midday, during the midnight. 
and it, you know by with the revelations of God he shows people what we need to do based on the principles of the Bible everyone who embraces time will know what to do everyone who embraces time those in source that they know how to do the things I have known of somebody who knew you know every midday they would wake up and move outside to collect soil Backed up, and that was a kind of thing that will push them in their businesses up. Between midday, you don't find them in their, in, their, in their shops. You don't find them in their workplaces. They walk out and they go and do things. Because the, in, according to what they know, if I capture this gate of time, you know, I will not be pushed anywhere. I will push people. I will set people off and it's going to be me. Who remain in the status of these friends. How many of us have understood what we need to do? How many of us use the opportunity of the times very well to carry our lives to the divinity of breakthrough? How many of us have picked up that responsibility? And we really know the times like this is for me to do this. We should also know the time. We'll put, embrace the time when you know. I, here I am to live. If any mistake happens and somebody begins to speak in your life and say you shall not leave, you shall die. You begin to tell them it's not my time. Hallelujah. If you know, if you embrace the portion of time, you can decree to some things that are happening. It is my time to get this. It is my time to marry. It is my time to walk. It is my time to do this. But only that can happen to them. That know and are able to, to embrace the opportunities of time. Without that, friends, even though you struggle like what? You, you, our struggle will just end up in vain. Because without that, friends, we live a life where the enemy will rise up beyond us. Where the enemy <coughs> will take much of the responsibility and times of our lives. And will miss that which the Father purposes for us. Do you know the times of your life? Do you know the times? Do you know the times? I suppose we spot your life. Do you know the times? When we don't know the time and the season, we will sleep in the time and the season when the Lord had the purpose that we get out. Remember why, that's why it's called opportunities by God. He will not come to wake you up and say this is the opportunity. No. He communicates and prior we get to know that this is the opportunity that I have. This is the time. This is my time to break through. This is my time to walk into the thing. And that is how you have to pick it up. That is how you have to stand it. But without that, friends, you will wait for another time and season and things will not work for you. The Bible says when God spoke to the, to the children of Israel, they will be taken over to, to Babylon. But that time in Babylon was for only 70 years. But they never understood that. They never embraced the knowledge of that. They had to stay for over 80 plus years before their redemption would come. When we don't know times, our time, anything can happen to us and we think it is God. No wonder today people die and everybody say, for God has given, God has taken. Was it the timing of God? Was it? Somebody decide to go somewhere and lock up people's lives. They go and enchant in you and they come out. And you know, things just happen to you and they just say, God has given, God has taken. No. Was it the time? Was it the time for that person to go? Was it the time for that thing to happen for you? You need to understand, while God has given us time, the devil is in total work to make sure that the time God has given unto us, many of us will not have the benefit of time. 
Never. No wonder by 6 a.m., 5 a.m., devil was to pass at work. By 6, they know time. The eight hours of time, the gates of time are known by them. 6, 9, they know what to do by 9 a.m. By midday, they know what to do. By, you know, by 3 p.m., they know what to do. By 6 p.m., they know what to do. By 9 p.m., they know what to do. By midnight, they know what to do. By 3 a.m., they know what to do. When you look through scriptures, many of the, the devil's operations are always between the gates of time. And whatever you will be doing, it does them according to the gates of time. It does them according to the seasons that he knows this is if I don't do this, I lose the, matter, the, the battle. And so sometimes you find people awake and dancing and all, or drumming throughout of life. Because they have to understand the time. I remember when my grandmother was oh, sickly. The only time the witch doctors that were brought to home, you know, would operate and begin to sound their things was between the hour of midnight. Everyone would be settled in the room by half past 11 and they would, the witch doctors would begin to you know, rotate, but they would never shake their things. But exactly midnight, like they begin, you be, he begin to hear them talk. You begin to hear them shake the things around boo, 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 and drumming. They knew the time where deeper darkness has come and the man of darkness is in operation. Friends, do you know the time that you need to break through? Do you know the time that you need to deal with the every adversary power in your life? Opportunity by God has already been given. He bestowed it to us. If we know how to embrace it, then we will be able to have victory. These opportunities of time are more so to believers than those who are there. But God does not segregate. He left it open. For they that know their God shall do greater exploits. If you don't know, if you don't know the time, they can, you can never be, do, be able to do the greater exploits. The guys who know the other gods of theirs, instead, will do greater exploits in your life beyond what you can ever do. Praise the Lord. My prayer is for every one of us today that the Lord God we serve will be honorable to us. He will come through and give us the knowledge of all the things that we need. And by that, we can be able to break through over every alignment that the enemy stands off in our lives. Embracing time calls us to a state in life where we have to wake up. Every one of us who needs to embrace the opportunity, we need to wake up. And therefore, I will share with us briefly what scripture speaks and examples in the Bible of people who Embrace every opportunity and which kind, what kind of opportunities that they embrace. Number one, opportunity to prove their faith. From Genesis to Revelation, we read about men who use, who embrace the opportunity to, you know, to prove their faith to the Lord. And that was how they had breakthroughs in their lives. Abraham proved faith in the Lord. The disciples of Jesus were to prove opportunity was there. There is no way you will be able to prove your faith if there is no opportunity of a trial. A trial came the life of Abraham. He had to prove. Live and go. Live and go. You have assignment by God. You are called by God to ministry. You have papers. You have everything. You are well educated. And people look at you and laugh and say, this man does not know what they want. With a first class degree, you are going to say you are going to be a pastor. You are going to preach. This that is stupidity of the highest order. You know? And indeed, if you believe in that, you will actually not make it. 
Sometimes when you kick start what the Lord called you into and the things begin to rain in you, you can run away because you begin to imagine with all this degree I have, I come here to just be a pastor. I come here to just preach to people. But that is why God wants to see who are you more faithful to? To him or to the papers? To him or to the people talking to your life? To him or to what? Opportunity to prove our faith is very key in our lives. In times of storms, God expects us to prove our faith. Because the opportunity to eat is already there. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 1 to Daniel chapter 3. Opportunity was given to the, to, to the three Hebrews. Opportunity to go to the palace. They were chosen as wise men to go to the palace. That was a very wise opportunity. A great opportunity. They had to embrace it. They didn't refuse like some of us. You know, you are given a job in a particular place and you say, that place is not good for me. I am saved. No. Seek the Lord and just understand, God, is it, do you want me to go here? Sometimes we we'll reach a point in life where people think, because of being born again, you cannot work in some particular places. Seek the Lord. God can take you to a place so that he can, you know, he has given an opportunity to prove that your faith in him is unshakable. The guys were taken to a palace where idolatry was the order of the day. Even the food eaten in the palace was already sacrificed. They needed now to prove whether they will dance to the tune of the palace gods. Oh, prove to their God that they are faithful to him. The Bible says when the first thing brought to them was, you know, the meat. They say feed them in the meat of the palace. They had to prove that, you know, we are not part of this. The opportunity to prove their faith in God came. Today we live in a life where people think. You can only prove your faith when you're in charge. No. What then are you going to prove in charge when you're between brothers who are of the same nature? What are you going to prove there? To prove something of your faith in the Lord. He defines you at the place where everybody looks and says, What? That is not the right place for you, Pastor Isaac. No. But that is the place God wants you to be in. So that from there you prove to him to show, yes, I trust in you. When the guys refused to eat the meat, that they had proven their faith to their Lord. They proved to God that we are not and cannot stick on our destiny because of meat only. Hallelujah. The challenge we have today is we don't know how to use the opportunities that we have properly. We don't know. You go to a place, you turn to become, you know, as that person. You go to a place, the place swallows you up. Today, people work in bars. Bars swallow them up. You don't understand that you can be used by God to use that bar and turn it to another place. You don't have to go there and begin to drink. Prove to your God you are faithful to him in a quagmaric place. Hallelujah. Prove to the Lord that you cannot be taken by Mormonism. You go to a place filled of money. You meet a person who has the money and then you decide to sell your soul to the person. You don't know, know that this person has actually been sent to target and see whether you can prove that I can either live you either go with my tune, go with my way, or you, I leave you because I am for the Lord and I serve God only. In Acts of Apostles chapter 28 and verses 5 onwards, Paul had to prove 
His faith in the Lord. In the storm. Even when the snake had beaten him up. He just woke up without crying. Shook his, the serpent out of his hand. And everything was normal. But sometimes when things happen to you. You prove your faith in the Lord. People think you will die. You just wake up and shake your body from the system and you move. Opportunity to prove. Opportunity to embrace your faith in the Lord is given by him himself. Look through things up in your life. Embrace the opportunity to prove your faith to the Lord. This year I speak to someone listening to me. May you use this year as a gate of time. You know, to embrace the opportunity of faith. And prove your faith in the Lord your God. And make every enemy, make everything that will never thought that you could ever prove your faith in the Lord. Just be rendered useless and confused. Praise the Lord. In the book of Mark chapter 4, verse 1 forward. The disciples had the opportunity to prove in the storm their faith in the Lord. Instead of crying higher in the storm, they were meant to prove their faith. The portion was there. You have walked with Jesus for this long. When will you prove that opportunity that I have walked long with Christ? We embrace it now. Embrace everything that comes your way. And prove your faith to the Lord there. In, in case things begin to happen in a way the Lord never declared over your life. Embrace that and, 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 you know, and prove your, your faith in the Lord through the situation that come. And show God that you are not the same like what they think. Praise the Lord. God also gives us opportunity to love. One of the instructions God gave me this year. Was that as the doors are open, men must embrace love. John chapter 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, God speaks about love. All things will come to an end, but love will stand. Embrace love. When you embrace love, you forgive. When you embrace love, you let go. When you embrace love, you are not judgmental. These are opportunities, opportunities for us to embrace. God has given us different opportunities in this world. What will you take in, my friends? What will you carry on with you? Take opportunity, embrace opportunity of love. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. That which you cannot do to yourself, don't do it to your neighbor. Believers are very terrible people today. You know, you believe, you think someone is with you, but the same person is the one talking around your name. These are things that I have really hated in my life. You give opportunity to people. And the people talk you out there. These are believers. You know. They do not know how to walk in love. Opportunity of love is there. Can you embrace love? And forget about all these other things. Why do we give the devil this higher rank? He is now exalted in our mind yeah, that we spread every useless rumor that we don't have proof about. We speak nonsense that we don't even have a reasoning capacity to tell ourselves about. When we embrace love, the opportunity of love will give us a point to prove to the world that our God is greater and powerful than things of the world. So friends, I know, while we are running in life, there's so many things God wish of us. But he has pushed every opportunity for us to embrace them. Embrace love. Number three. God also put us with the opportunity to co-creating. Go and multiply. 
Use the opportunity properly. Instead of going to do abortion, go and multiply. You know? Our purpose, opportunity for us is to be co-creators. In Genesis that we read earlier, are you a co-creator or you a murderer? You find married people murdering. You know? Someone wakes up, they are murderers. People don't know that the way we are doing it's abortion, not only abortion is murdering, but also withdrawing in sex is murder. Because every seed that was meant to be planted, you are withdrawing, you are, you are wasting it. That's why God killed the son of Judah. Because of that. Ask yourself a question. What am I doing? I've been given opportunity to co-create. What am I doing? Hallelujah. It's my prayer that God will help us understand some few things today and get ourselves to the light where you can walk in the purposes of God. Opportunity to be like God. Psalm 81, the Bible says, verse 1, we are gods. Can someone look at you and say, oh God, hey, hey, that man is just like God. They look at you and people will begin to wonder, why did I ever meet this person? Embrace the opportunity to be like God. Embrace the opportunity of being a God. And because you are a God, do things that God does. Don't do things that other things do. Hallelujah. That's a great opportunity that we need to embrace. Embrace the opportunity of being a God. And act things right. But by Christ, because he was a God, he embraced every opportunity of God. And he never stood over some people and began to insult. Do what? He forgave. He let go. He even asked them, if you know that you've never done this, be the first to throw a stone. Who was there to do so? Nobody. But today, can we do that? Engage in talks that you don't understand. All in verse 20 say, I stand and open, and the, open door. the door. Whoever hears Whoever. me and opens, I knock at the door. When you hear, I will come in. There is a, a red day of God has declared opportunity. He's standing at the doors of our lives. Can we open in 2024 and tell the Lord, come and dine with us? That scripture is not for people who want to be saved. No. People think today that if you want to be saved, you just go. You hear the Lord is standing at the door, so I open. No. That scripture is for us who are saved, but we are, we are operating in a different way. He says, I'm standing at your door, Isaac. There is an opportunity for either you open for me or keep close and walk in your closeness. Do you have that opportunity? Have you had Christ knock at the door of your life? What have you done about it, friends? In this lunch hour today, look beyond. Hear Christ. And come because he is standing at the door and knocking for you. Will you hear him and open the door? Will you hear him and, and allow things to work as a purpose? Friends, these, those are great opportunities we have. There's also opportunity of making choices. Deuteronomy chapter 30 verse 19. Today I put opportunity here for you. Choose life or choose death. Which opportunity, which opportunity are you going to choose? Which one are you going to embrace in 2024? Life or death? The opportunity is open. 366 days are here for you. The opportunity is open. Will you do it? He got freedom. You have something to do for you to be free. You have to do something for you to walk out. You have to do something you to do for you something. to, you know, come out of all the alignments of things within and around your life. You have to do something. Freedom 
who come to thee who are ready for it. Choose to be free from ancestral worship. Choose to be free from, you know, friends and groups of people who carry you off. Choose to be free from manasses that you know are never growing. Choose to be free from, you know, illegalities. You cannot be a same person yesterday, today and forever. Choose freedom. How can you live a life and you are just the same? You cannot choose freedom from selfishness. I have met people who are too selfish. They don't care. You know this thing is going to help all of us. But they don't care. You say as long as the money doesn't come from me, I don't care. Choose to be free from that selfishness. That's an opportunity God gives us. And God keeps on testing us every time. He sees and says, Isaac, do you choose freedom? Or you choose the same mind and say, as long as the money is not mine, I don't care. I will just throw everything. I will wake up and, you know, kill everything that I need in my life. I don't care. I want to sweep the place. I don't care. I don't stay there. Choose freedom. Be free from things that all you enslave. Choose freedom. If you don't get yourself free, friends, you will be dancing and promoting the devil. Freedom is a choice. If you want to be free, make decisions and you will be free. Opportunity to know what to do and not what to do. Those opportunity God has given us this year. Know what you have to do and that which you don't have to do. Be in a place, but you know what you have to do. And you know what you're not meant to do. Many of us are taking over. But we have opportunity. We embrace the opportunity to know what to do. And what that which we don't need to do. Opportunity of being wise and never foolish. The Bible says in Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. Be wise as a serpent. And come as a dove. The wisdom God needs of us is wisdom of being like a serpent. But when we look, when you look at many people, we are so naive. You know, a snake will never cross the road anyhow. A snake, when it's going for something, it has to time properly. It will just not get out, you know. That's why it's very rare for you to, you know, to kill a snake on the road. The snakes killed on the road are snakes which time, but they never calculated that the vehicle is running in speed. They, catch, they see and then they begin to move and then they just you know, crash because a vehicle is coming from afar and on speed and it's catching them up. Be wise as a serpent. That's the opportunity God has given. This year, be as wise as a serpent that you can even climb a tree without legs. Nothing hinders you. Shouldn't go to places people, someone is telling you to do some things you don't understand, you just do that. Be wise as a serpent. You shall be free. Second last. Opportunity to discern. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 52 verse 13 to 15. He said, my servant will act wisely. You discern what to do and how to act on it wisely. Those opportunity God wants of us. So friends, I render this to you. And I want to submit now and ask of you friends, what opportunity will you choose? In this 2024. Which opportunity are you going to embrace? There are all these God-given opportunities. Which one will you embrace? Will you embrace to be a child of God? Or a child of Satan? Will you embrace to be a priest of God? Or a priest of Satan? All these are unto us 
to make choices of. Whatever we embrace, whatever opportunity we embrace, is that which will define our time, our lives, as far as 2024 is concerned. May God help every one of us to sit and analyze which God given opportunities are there for us to embrace. I wish you all a very blessed season. I wish you a very great time of analyzing every given opportunities by God and fixing yourself on which one you need to embrace. While the world has given us so many opportunities, choose the opportunity of God you will embrace. Father, thank you. And I honor you for this word. Blessed be your name. To everyone who embraces your word, bless them, increase them, and lift them up. To your glory and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. May I thank you all for calling. And thank you so much for being part of the lunch hour today. Our next lunch hour will be next Tuesday. Tomorrow, don't forget, we have commanding your morning. As that was one of the beginning things I began with. He asked Job, do you know how to command your morning? Join us and learn how you command your morning tomorrow. Exactly 6 to 7 a.m. And then later we shall have a night of prayer. From exactly 10.30 reporting time and 11 kicking soap. And we pray up to 4 a.m. Physical and online. Choose which opportunity to embrace. Being online or being physical. That is also opportunity for you to choose. And then later, which other programs remain the same as we entrust it to the Lord. Thank you for supporting the ministry financially. This year, last year, we had so many debts. The demands come and we are, able, we are not able to meet. We have a cost which is higher than the collection that we have. We have. And we saw that running throughout the first quarter, the second quarter. But it's my prayer this, this year, the Lord will bless us. And the blessings that come and support the ministry begins with your blessing. So may God bless the works of your hands so you can be able to support. Support in your tithe. Bring food in the house of God you can have. Support in thanksgiving. Support in love offering. Support in partnership. I remind those of us who pledge to be partners. Please don't forget your pledges. With the monthly kind of contribution you said you will do, do not allow the devil to slip your head up and forget a pledge that you made. God bless you and God bless the works of our hands and God bless our offering together in Yeshua's name. Amen. We shall unmute together and share in the words of grace as we wind up today. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, let us with the Holy Spirit be with us Christ. all now and forever. And the love of God. Amen. And the fellowship of the Thank you all those who call in.